and we're live. Welcome to the 26th episode of Roxim Live. This is our very first episode on YouTube uh, and on YouTube Live before we were on Facebook and we're trying out YouTube and so far I'm liking it. Um, my name is Tim Van Milligan, if you don't know me. Uh, this is Roxim Live, so we're going to talk about Roxim. Uh, Roxim is a design and simulation program for model rockets. Um, I think most of the people that are watching right now uh, actually know that, but if you're watching this uh, as recording, uh, that's what it's about. Um, I've got a monitor over here, and I'm uh, seeing who's in the room. Uh, currently, we're starting out with 19 viewers, which is really really good. Um, we've got uh, got a lot of people. Um, and we already got our first question. Is it possible to remove a glued fin without breaking it? <laughs> well, it's not quite a Roxim question, but it's a good question nonetheless. Um, that was from Brian Gilbert. Um, and he's from Concord, New Hampshire. Uh, so welcome there, uh, Brian. Uh, so if, you, if you're new to Roxim and if you've never used it before, let me uh, show you um, how to get to it. Um, if you go to the Apogee Components website, our, our web address is apogeerockets.com. Um, there's this banner bar up here at the top and you can see it sliding automatically. Um, there's a little button over here on either side. And if you click on the buttons, um, it'll take you to the one that says Roxim. Um, and you click on that, um, this is the kind of the fastest way to get there. Here's the free trial version you can download. Um, you can order it here. Um, we had, a couple weeks ago, we released version 10.3.1, which is the current version that we're now using. Um, yeah, and it's uh, it seems to be okay. Uh, we noticed uh, there's one little glitch that sometimes when you try to open a new file, it will crash. But it, it's only for me, it's only happened when I'm trying to open a new file. Um, but it's hard. It's one of those bugs that we can't duplicate it consistently. So that's the ones that drive us nuts. Um, but other than that, it's pretty stable. This is what it looks like. Um, I did have one question from Cosmo Rito, who uh, he, he asked the question on a previous Roxim Live on YouTube. Um, so he was watching the playback and he saw and he entered a question. And his question was, how do you create an Ogive nose cone? That's a really easy question to answer. So I'll start with that because you're going to basically when you're starting to design a rocket, you need to start with a nose cone. Um, so when you when you first start Roxim, um, along here on the top are these tabs. And to design a rocket, you kind of start from the left side and you work your way to the right. So first you get to give it a, a name and you will call it um, episode, I can't spell, episode 26. Um, and then I'll go to the design components. One of the things I forgot to do is I forgot to make my cursor larger because sometimes I can move my cursor so fast that um, you don't see it so, and that can make it hard to watch. So let me change that here just to make the cursor large. So now I got this big cursor you can see um, and it doesn't look like a little fly moving across your screen. Um, so you go to the design components and then you click nose cone and the first thing it always does is it tries to pick a, a nose cone from the database so that's what this screen is that popped up right here so I'm going to cancel a lot of that because I'm going to create a brand new one from from scratch that's never been used before um, so here is the answer to Cosmos question is you know it has a name and then it has a shape and from the shape you just choose Ogive right here at the top. So now we're going to create an Ogive nose cone. And then at this point, it's just specifying the, you know, the parameters, the length and the diameter. So I can make it a five inch long nose cone, give it a diameter of 1.637, which is a BT60 size. Um, base length, this right here, is if 
you had a straight cylinder extending off of the nose cone. See if I, I just grab it and you can see, I'm just making it longer, but it, um, it starts the straight portion, which is the base length starts right there. Uh, most nose cones don't have it, so I'm gonna turn it back down to zero. Uh, we're missing a shoulder on the back to go in a tube. So you go to this one over here to shoulder, click on that. Um, and then you can, the easiest way to get the dimensions is to choose a compatible tube. And I already said that this is a BT60, which is this one right here. It's also called a 41.6 millimeter because that's the actual inside diameter. And I click OK. And see now you can see if I zoom in. And to zoom in, you can use your mouse um, and the scroll wheel and just go zoom in and then click and drag. And you can see that it's got this little remnant line right here. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, but here's the shoulder on the nose cone. Um, so that's pretty easy on how to make it. Um, and if you wanted to actually like 3D print it, first I'd save this. Oops, it says I didn't specify a material. So I have to go to the general tab, specify a material, and I'll say this is balsa wood. And it's solid and click OK. Um, and then you can come up here to, if you want to print it, you go to export under the file menu and then 3D model. And it will bring up a screen right here to say where you're going to save it. And I'm going to click on my desktop and I'll just call it uh, episode 26 nose cone. And I have to select down from here, which it's not readily apparent, but you have to select the um, what type of export you want to do. Um, I can do an OBJ. I can do save. I wanted to get STL. So it saved it. So there's an OBJ on the, the desktop. I think if I go back here to the nose cone and if I go export template, this button right here, I think this is where it gives me um, the STL format. So I can export, export it as STL, uh, nose cone dot uh, STL. And it's also going to be on my desktop. Click save. Uh, the required extension is SVG. Let me cancel. Oops. STL. There we go. Uh, and then this gives you um, what kind of number of faces on your surface. Um, I've demonstrated this before. If you click low resolution, it's going to be really chunky. Um, if you ch choose a high resolution, it'll be, it'll be a lot smoother. So I'll click OK and I'll show you what that looks like. So this also exported it to the desktop. So I'm going to click cancel here. Save my changes, yes. I need to get to my desktop. Okay, so here's my desktop. On the Macintosh, um, you have this button here to do, um, I don't know what it's called, but it allows you to see the files. And now it's looking on my desktop. And so this is, these are all the files on my desktop. You know, it's like I got some uh, PNG files, whatever. Um, but here's the OBJ. Come on, it won't let me click on that one. Oh, it's dragging. It was seeing it before. There it is. Uh, let's see. So there is what the uh, STL looks like. So if I went to a 3D printer and I said print it, there it is. So that is how you would create an Ogive nose cone. Let's see if there's any other questions. Oh boy, we got a bunch of questions. Um, so I'm reading them. Pa pardon me for reading these. <laughs> Um, in the preferences, AB Hobbies, hi from the Midwest. In the preferences for the plot, when I check or uncheck display data point markers and display grid subdivisions, I see no changes to the plot using Windows. Um, that might be a problem in our plot. So let me take a look. So I need to open a new design here. I'm going to go to a katana. 
doesn't matter which one I choose. Eh, let's do an egg storminator. Click open. Save this one? No, I'm not going to save it. So this is the exterminator rocket. And what he's talking about, if you go to the flight simulations and you choose to graph something in the plots, so um, you have to pick what you want to graph. So you have to choose a simulation. You can either choose one that's already been run or you can run a new one. Um, I'm just going to choose one that's already been run and then go up here to plot graph. And it just reran that simulation real quick. Um, and so what he's saying is choosing display data point markers and subdivisions. So, okay, so there's a marker size right up here. And right now I have my data markers at, at none. So I'm going to choose an ellipse for the thrust. Uh, let me just clear out these other ones so that uh, we can see what we're seeing. Um, and I have the graph ending at a flight time of 14 seconds, so I'm going to click Plot Graph. Okay, so it is showing the data part markers. See these dots? I'm trying to zoom in on, them, the, on these dots so you can see them. But you can see the lines are nice and thin, and then there's the dots. Um, so that's a data point marker. Um, so I'm going back to there. Let's turn those off and then replot the graph. Okay, and see now the markers are gone. Okay, so it seems to be working for me. Let's go to um, display. It might be um, AB that you didn't um, have something selected right here because I had... Um, when you select that, you have to choose some kind of marker. And if there's none, obviously it's not going to plot anything. Um, display grid subdivisions. So let's plot the graph. Um, okay, let's see what happens. Okay, grid subdivisions. So that one, I'm seeing a, a, a faint white line right there, and I'm seeing the vertical lines. Let's uncheck it. Now let's turn that on. Okay, so doing the subdivisions, that I think might be an issue. So thanks for pointing us out. I don't know if it's a big issue or not because there, there are lines there um, that, you, that you have available. But uh, thanks for pointing that out, AB. Let me see. Greetings from New Hampshire. Reggie Morrow is here. And then include plans for accessories like launchers, controllers, and pads also. That's uh, DSMT asks, will Roxim include plans for accessories like launchers, controllers, and launch pads also? And the answer is no. <laughs> um, if you want plans for accessories and launchers, um, then you have to go to the Apogee website. Um, so if you type in uh, launcher plans. Um, here is a product called um, Electronic Mo Model Rocket Launcher Plans and Tips. Um, that's a pretty good book for different building your own launch controllers. Um, launch pads. Uh, we do have a launch pad. So if I go here to how to and guides, if you, you, you can buy one. It's the simplest thing is to buy a pad. And so you go to shopping, um, launch accessories, and so you can buy a controller if you just want one that's pre-built. You can also buy pads. If you click on pads, we have several different kinds. We have this, this small one here. We have the Estes Pro Series, an Aerotech, and a gun turret. Uh, those are the pads that we carry. If you want plans, um, then you go to how to and guides on our website. Um, go to the Peak of Flight newsletter right here, click on that, and then go to All Newsletters. We have over 551, the 551st one, first one was released on Tuesday. Uh, but this shows you all of our newsletters, and now you're trying to find where exactly here's a plan. So on your keyboard, once you get to the page, here's a trick. This is a great trick. 
Um, you, you do a Command F or Control F on Windows, and when you do up here at the top, you'll get a, another search bar. And this is different from the Apogee search bar, which is right there. This one searches just this page. So you can do, um, let's type in launch pad and see what comes up. And sure enough, we have an issue number 235 is how to build a high power rail launch pad. Um, so there's your answer for how to build a pad. <laughs> Great, thanks for asking. Uh, Karen Ma, I was reading Pika Flight issue number 96 about making a tumbler booster stage. How do I make it tumble in Roxim? I created just the booster section and it seemed like its margin was always overstable. Okay, that's a good question. Let's see if we can do it. So, um, so we're going to start with a new, well, Let's, let's add a booster section to this rocket right here. So to do that, you go to Rocket Design Attributes tab, and we're going to select number of stages to be a two-stage rocket. And when you do that, what happens is um, over here, you have this is your components tree. We have this sustainer, and you can see this little triangle. That means there's parts already attached to it. And then we have the booster section, and now we can attach parts to the booster section. So I'm going to attach, I'm going to highlight it first, I'm going to attach a body tube. And it's looking in the database for a body tube, and I need to get a body tube that matches this tube here. Um, and I already know this is a BT-80, which is 66 millimeters in diameter. And this is the hardest part about designing a rocket is matching sizes. This is where experience comes in and playing. <laughs> um, so I'm going to click on that, click OK. So, so it added a tube down here. And um, right now the tube is 18 inches long. I'm going to say OK. Um, let's make it a different color. That color there. And let's make it red. So I'm just trying to make it a little easier for you to see on your screen. Click OK. Uh, right now you're not seeing it because it's right here. I'm only showing the top stage, which is you know, the sustainer. So if I click on this button, now I can see the second stage, you know, which is the first booster or the, the or three stage rocket. But this is gonna be a two stage. So I click on that and sure enough, there's our tube. Now let's add some fins to that tube. So I'm just gonna click on fins. Again, it always goes in the database first. If you don't want it to go in the database, um, you just click this button down here. Um, and then I'm gonna click cancel out of that. So the next time I, I go to fins, it's not gonna look in the database. And it throws a generic fin on the rocket and it tries to make it stable. So that's why it's like pre-sized this big. Um, so if I change the semi-span, the semi-span is the distance from the the body tube out to the tip, and I can just grab the slider here and just slide it and make it smaller. See what I'm doing? It's just, it's in, it happens in real time. Um, and then I need to select the material, so I'm gonna make it balsa wood again. And if I like it, if I like the color, let me change the color to red again. And we'll click OK. So there it is. Um, and now it shows the rocket is really overstable because we have the center of gravity up here. Here's our center of pressure for the two-stage configuration. Um, let's put a rocket tube in the bottom. So let's add an inside tube. And let's make it a 24 millimeter and click OK. So it added the tube right there. And I'm going to change the location of that tube to make it to the back. So now all the reference locations are going to be from the back when I choose from the base of the owning part. And then I'm going to slide the slider bar towards the front. You can see my number is getting smaller here. So when it gets to zero, 
it should be flush right back here at the back of the tube. So I just take it and slide it all the way up to the front. So now it's flush at the back. Um, and I have to make it paper. And I'm going to change the name to engine tube. And I'll click OK. So there's the tube in the back. And at this point, even though it doesn't have centering rings, um, I can run a simulation. Although I don't think I specified that that was an engine tube, <laughs> other than the name. There's this little box right here that says, this is motor mount. So click that. And now I'm going to load engines. And so we're going to go here, choose an engine. Um, let's choose an Estes E15. Did I say? Um, okay. I was just trying, I was just, I thought I made that as 24 millimeter, but I, I just remembered I'm looking at the sustainer engine tube, which is the one up here, not the one back here. So to get that one, which is here, I have to click on this. I called it tuber. <laughs> choose an engine. Um, let's choose an, an Estes D120. Load that in there. So now my engine is loaded in the back. And let's run a simulation. Um, so the flight events uh, deploy the parachute at maximum ejection delay. Uh, just trying to see how this, this simulation is configured. Starting state, it's a 48 inch long launch rod aimed straight up. Under launch conditions, um, we've got an eight mile an hour wind and it's gonna be blowing from the left of the screen to the right. Uh, let's see it in the flight profile. So it's running the simulation. So here's the rocket sitting down here. Now this is just a generic rocket. And um, unfortunately, it doesn't look like our current rocket. But we can run the simulation and we can see what the booster is. So if you see the, these little tiny pink fins down here, that's our booster stage. Um, and if I click launch, the rocket's taken off. Okay, so did you? Okay, so watch the booster stage. It, it fell off, and yes, it looked it looked stable. It's launching stable. Okay, so she. So what? Um, the question was Karen Ma, asked, "How do I make it tumble in Roxham?" Okay, so we've got a stable booster right here, and so. Now, um, let's, let's save this design. So I'm going to do a file, save as. I'm not going to do save because then it would just overwrite my current design. I'm going to throw this on the desktop, exterminator with booster. Click save. So right now our booster section is stable and we want to make it unstable. So it tumbles as it, it's coming back down to the ground. Okay, so now what I'm going to do I'm going to go to the design components. Here's this booster right here. Um, I'm going to click on the body tube and I'm going to do a copy. So I did a right click on it and then choose copy. You can also come up here to the edit menu and do copy up here, but I just do it from here. Okay, so it's copied on my clipboard. I'm going to start a brand new design. This is already saved, so I'm not going to save it. So we got a brand new design, and now I'm going to do, see if I can paste it. Paste. Okay, it did. It worked. <laughs> okay, so now we're looking just at the booster stage. Um, and it's, um, let's put a rocket engine in it. So we'll go here, and we had an Estes D12-0. Click OK. All right, so right now it's still showing the rocket as stable. So how do, you, how do we know that the rocket is stable? Um, and the, the, the definition of stability is when the center of gravity, which is this symbol right here, is in front of the center of pressure, which is this symbol right here. Um, the center of gravity, let me change screens here and remind me to come back okay so the center of gravity is easy to find it so you just balance the rocket 
the center of pressure is where all the aerodynamic forces balance. So as there's air flowing over it, it's creating lift and drag on the fins and the nose cone and the tube. And where all those forces balance is the center of pressure. And Roxim is telling us it's, you know, it's back here. You know, the nose cone is off. Which is, you know, this is about the, what I designed. It was like that without the nose cone. And so we need to make this uh, unstable. So let me go back here. Um, so we need to move the center of pressure in front of the center of gravity. And she was asking, um, she says it was, seemed like it, it was always overstable. Um, so how do you move that center of pressure? Because the center of gravity is by balancing it. We can move this, we can either, we can choose one. We can either move the center of gravity backwards. And to do that, we can make the back end of the rocket heavier, or we can move the center of pressure forwards. Um, and it's, I would always recommend changing the center of pressure. Um, so to do that, see, see one of the problems with um, the center of gravity is this center of gravity is with the rocket motor propellant in the engine. We haven't burned the, the propellant off yet. So as we burn off that propellant, that center of gravity is going to move forward. So um, it'd be better to change the center of pressure. So to do that, we got one of two ways. We can make the rocket shorter, or we can move our fins forward. And it's easier to move the fins, uh, but we'll start with the tube. So I'm going to go and edit the tube, and I'm going to change the length. Uh, you see what happened here? My fins didn't move with the tube. And I'll show you how to fix that. Let me cancel out of this. So let's change that first. Ch save the changes? No. Okay, so you go here to your fin set. Click on that. Double click. And that opens this up. And then see right here it says from the front of the owning part. So that's its location is from the front of this part. So the front of this fin is always going to be right now 12.8 inches. So I need it to make it from the base of the owning part. Okay, and then it now it's it switched it to zero because now it's measuring from the back of the part, which is the owning part is the tube. And so the back of the fin is zero inches. So now um, say click OK. So now if I go and edit my tube, so you can just double click on it. And if I change the length, now my fins go with it. You can see as I'm moving it, the center of pressure is moving and the center of gravity is also moving, but the center of pressure is moving faster. And when we get it to this point, you know, where the center of pressure is ahead of the center of gravity, let me zoom in. Now the rocket is unstable. You can see it right here. It says unstable. But Remember, at this point, there's still propellant in the motor. And as the rocket burns off propellant, that center of gravity during flight is actually going to shift. And, it, and it's going to shift forward. And it actually is going to might move in front of the center pressure. And then the rocket's stable again. So now we've got the stable booster coming down. So to make sure that it's going it, to, it's always going to shift. It's just a matter of how far. So we just have to make, we have to build in some allowance that when the propellant does burn off, it doesn't shift in front of the center pressure. So I'm just gonna choose the length and make it even shorter. You know, I'll make it like that. At this point, we're, we're unstable. Uh, let's click okay. And let's launch this rocket. And we know at this point it's going to go unstable. But what we want to make sure is after it burns out that it's still unstable. So let's take a look at the flight profile of this rocket. And I'm going here to, to prepare for launch. I'm going to click on flight profile again. It says you must save your design. Um, I'll just call it uh, booster <laughs> test and click save. Okay, so it ran the simulation. Here's the rocket and 
Okay, so we're... Okay, uh, okay, so what I'm looking for, I don't know if you can see it, because this is very tiny, but right below the base of the rocket is a tiny little flame. <laughs> so at this point, the rocket is still burning, and I think a D12 burns for almost two and a half seconds. So it's flipping around, flipping around. It's unstable, which we know it's going to be. There's another puff of smoke. Continue to burning. It's going up. Okay, so at this point, the rocket has burned out. And now I want to make sure that it's still tumbling as it's falling down. And it's still tumbling, which is good. So at this point, I know that this booster configuration right here no matter what I do to it, it's going to be unstable. So basically what we did, let's see, let's go back to this. So that body tube, we made it two point or 6.25 inches long. And click cancel there. Ooh, that's cool. We got these more remnant lines going on right here. Let's save that. Um, so if I go back to my original design, that was on the desktop uh, with the booster stage. Open that up. And if I make that booster engine uh, 6.25 inches long, it should be unstable when we launch it. But remember, our fin set in this current design is also, we need to change that from the base of the owning part. Click OK. And I'm going to go to the boot body tube and then make this one 6.25 just to match the other one. Um, you type in the number and then you hit the hit tab and then watch this, you know, drawing and you'll, you'll get short real quick when I hit tab. <laughs> so there it went. Click OK. I'm going to save the design. I'm going to go back to my flight simulation. So that last simulation right here, uh, the D12-0 F15-8, it crashed because we have a really long delay. Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to load that same engine combination. So to do that, just come to the simulation, highlight it, and then with your mouse, the keys, use your right click. Click on that and say load engines. And it reloaded the engines into the rocket real quick. Let's see, they're already loaded. And th what that does is now I don't have to click choose engine here and load each engine separately. I can do both at one time with like one click. Um, everything else stayed the same. So let's go to the flight profile, launch it. So here's our rocket again. And we know the rocket's going to crash, but we're, we're interested in that booster stage and seeing if that booster is still unstable. So the rocket takes off. Oh, it still looks like it's coming down straight. Okay, cancel, okay. Let's double check one other place. Um, so we're gonna go plot. Remember, we just plotted. And I wanna look at, let's see if I can look at it. Um, booster one flight angle down here at the very bottom. Oh, you can't see it. It's off the bottom of your screen. But if you if you click on, you know, the, the things that you can select to plot, um, I'll choose, I'm going to leave thrust there. So I'm going to plot thrust. And I also want at the very bottom of the list is booster one flight angle. So then it shows up here and it's going to be a black line. And if this angle if the rocket is tumbling, that flight angle is going to go. It's going to be, it's going to be jumping from three, zero to three hundred and sixty degrees, and any number in between as it's tumbling. Um, so let's plot that graph. Okay, so booster one flight angle is the black line, which is right in the middle. It didn't tumble. It, uh, it did not tumble, just like we thought. So the, the green line is our thrust. So here's the, the D12-0 motor. 
it burned out. Uh, it was like 1.6 or 7 seconds. And then the F-15 started burning, and I'm only plotting out to, um, you know, a few se four seconds into the, the data. Um, graph ending point at the end of the data. Plot the graph. Hmm, that's interesting. Why didn't it change that? Graph starting at uh, time zero, 14 seconds. Let's change this to zero. Plot the graph. It didn't work. It was working the other day because I just that just tested that. <laughs> have to have to look into that one too. Um, okay, so the booster is still not tumbling. So let's see if we can get it to tumble. So we're going to go back to the booster stage. Okay, so one th we made that tube almost, well, we can make it a little bit shorter. We can only make it as short as the front of the fin. Otherwise, my fins are going to go onto the f uh, upper stage. So um, I'm going to make that tube shorter. So what I'm looking at here, here's the fin. And I'm going to take that fin and I want to move it to the bottom of this fin. Oop, too far right there. Click OK. And let's run the simulation again. See if that fixed it. Flight profile. Uh, launch it again. Okay, it still looks like it's going stable. Let's double check here in the graph. Um, it's concerning me that I'm not seeing that. No legend. Plot the graph. Still not tumbling. Okay, so the next fix to do to make it tumble is to go to the fins in the booster stage and make them bigger. So we're going to edit the fins. Um, and we can... Um, take that semi-span you know, before we made them smaller, now we're going to make them bigger. So now they're really, really big. And let's launch it again. Let's see if we can make it tumble. We're not there yet. Okay, the, 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 the stage, it fell off a lot further. <laughs> it's still not tumbling. Okay, but that's the trick that you got to do. You eventually you will get it to where it tumbles. Um, in fact, let's let's look at in in Roxim Pro. Roxim Pro has a feature where I can actually get a better view of the flight. So I just saved it, and I have Roxim Pro open. So this is Roxim Pro. Oops. And Roxin Pro is just like Roxim, except for the simulations. It gives me a better view of the simulation. So I'm going to open up that design. Uh, go to my desktop. Here's the exterminator. Click open. So there's the rocket with the big fins that we just did. Go to the flight simulations. Load the engines. Okay, and then we're going to go and... Um, we have to s check our starting state. So our staging is going to occur, occur at the maximum ejection delay, and the parachute on the booster is going to come out uh, also at the max ejection delay. Starting state, we had a 48-inch rod before, so I need to match that. It was launched straight up. Um, and on wind, we had an 8-mile-an-hour wind. And let's click flight profile here. So now what you're going to see next is different. This is Roxim Pro. No data found. It may not show my booster stage. Um, so it's not showing the booster. Let me run that one more time. Usually it clears it the second time. Okay, yeah, it did. It worked. Okay, so now we're looking at our rocket in 3D. 
and I can rotate it around and it does look like the rocket we designed. Um, I Let me zoom out so you can see we're actually at a launch site and this is our club launch site in Pueblo, Colorado. Uh, you can see right here is the rocket. Um, and I got a, a close-up view down here in the bottom. This is called the mini view. Um, and let's launch it and see what happens. Now we're, we're interested in that booster stage. So the booster stage fell off. The rocket is continuing to go up. It reached its apogee point and it crashed, which we expected. Let me turn off the flame and the smoke, or the, at least the smoke, so you can see that booster stage. So you can see down here, we got flame coming out of the top, but I'm zooming in. I want to see the booster stage. Okay, so the green line is the trajectory of the rocket, and the yellow line is the booster stage. So right here in the middle is our booster stage. And here we want to see it if it's tumbling here. In fact, no, it's not. It's actually, if you look at that trajectory, here's the apogee point. And it was, the booster is actually gliding. It's acting like a, like a glider. It's gliding backwards. I'm zooming in on it. And it's kind of it's kind of pitching up and gliding. And then finally it it stalls and then it starts coming down. It's mostly you know that's it fell. <laughs> This is this was a really interesting question. That's why I'm taking so long on it. Um, this is Roxin Pro. Roxin Pro is going to be available like really soon. Um, if you want to keep up to date on it, make sure you're a subscriber to our newsletter. That's when we're going to announce it. We're just fixing the website now, putting the final touches on the website so that you can actually order it online. Um, you'd actually have to order it on the phone right now, but we're not really set up to take phone orders on it. Uh, okay, uh, let's go on to the next question. <laughs> I don't know if I'm, I'm boring you guys or not, but I'm having a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Um, Chris, Chris Schaefer says, can Roxon be used to simulate and test design for fireworks? And the answer is no. Because our rockets don't come apart like that. You know, they just separate. You just saw the uh, stage here in Roxin, the, the stage falling off. And you'd need all your parts falling off and blowing up. Um, so, no, we don't use Roxin for fireworks. Uh, I'm looking for more questions here. Can dual deploy be added to the rocket design to be simulated? So that's from Reggie Morrow. And the answer on that one is yes. So let me go back to Roxim. So we had a two-stage rocket. Uh, that's Roxim Pro. We need Roxim. Here's Roxim. Um, dual deployment means you have. Um, let's get rid of that booster stage. So let's take that off. So I'm going to delete it. Um, so I can, uh, to delete it, you have to go to the Roxim Design Attributes and change it back to a single stage, and then you're going to get a warning message, and you, this time you say yes. Do you really wish to delete the components? And say yes. So now that booster stage is gone. Now to set up dual deployment, you need two recovery devices. And so this one has a parachute, so that's the P for parachute. So we need another parachute inside the rocket or a streamer. And then we need to know where it's going to be attached. So um, this tube right here is the aft body tube. I can also put one in this front tube, which is an egg payload tube. So on a traditional dual deployment, you'd have a, a tube coupler with electronics inside of it. 
and then you'd put you know one parachute on one side and the other parachute on the other side um, usually the bigger one would go in the front and a smaller one in the back uh, but we're just I want to just show you how to set up the uh, simulation so I'm going to choose it this tube right here and then add a streamer instead of a parachute because uh, I just want it to fall really fast so I'm going to choose a 4 by 40 inch nylon chute or streamer doesn't really matter you can see it's up here in the front um, and you can adjust the location so make sure it's like right in the middle of the tube click OK um, so now it's actually we're ready to do dual deployment so we'll go here prepare for launch we have an F-15-8 so now we're gonna go to flight events and this is where you set up dual deployment so we have the streamer right here and then the parachute um, and they're both in the sustainer uh, the location is if you had pods on the outside of your rocket that would be the the alternate location but since it's in the main tube uh, there's nothing shown there um, so the streamer we're going to deploy at apogee so you just come out down here and say deploy at apogee and then your sustainer parachute, you're usually using electronics inside the rocket to deploy it at a specific altitude. So here we're gonna say deploy at altitude and let's pick an altitude. Let's call it 600 feet. So hopefully our rocket will go higher than 600 feet. And let's do a flight profile, launch it. So here's the rocket down here. And what we should see is at Apogee, the highest point in the flight, you should see the streamer come out, and then the rocket should drift down on the, on the streamer, and then when it gets below 600 feet, um, the parachute should come out. But I'm gonna kind of cheat over here, so I'm gonna kind of move this screen out of the way and see our maximum altitude. We didn't get to 600 feet, so it's not gonna happen. And the reason for that is because this is a heavy rocket and that F-15 is kind of wimpy so let's put a bigger motor in there so I'm just gonna scroll down and see if I can find a G motor something with a little bit of oomph so I'm gonna go with like a let's see, I want a smaller G G40 that's a good one let's see if there's something G53 I like that even better and I'm going to say plugged because it's it's a plugged motor is no ejection charge. Since we're since we're using electronics to to control when the devices come out, you can set it as plugged. And then I'm going to just hit flight profile. Okay, so I don't know if you saw it, but I did. So the maximum altitude was 1,668 feet. So this time we are getting above 600 feet. So when we launch it rocket takes off it's coasting upwards I'm gonna take a sip of water right here at this point we're at Apogee and there's the streamer streamer popped out the rocket is kind of falling fast um, look over here when we get to 600 feet it should switch to a parachute and there's the parachute the parachute popped out and now it's just drifting nice and slow down its parachute. So that's the purpose of dual deployment. That's a really good example because the, the, the whole purpose of dual deployment is to get the rocket to come down closer to the pad so you don't have to walk as far. And we only have to walk 114 feet on this particular flight. So hopefully, uh, Reggie, that answered your question, how do you set up dual deployment? Um, Sumar Kumar, Sagar Kumar, you build model rockets too. <laughs> oh, he's talking to somebody else. Uh, hello, old Estes Rocketeer here. Back in the hobby, I have been building a lot of the old Estes kits. What do you think about the Mars lander? I think that's a model rocket. It's not ours, so... Um, if it's an Apogee rocket, I would say, that's awesome rocket, but it's not ours. So it's just a model rocket. You might like it, you might not. It's your choice. <laughs> uh, let's see what other questions we have. Replatch those single stage. Likely why they didn't change. Um, hmm. uh, 
turntables. Uh, I, I'm at a launch right now, says Nathan Kane. Cool! <laughs> Uh, yeah, awesome. Uh, Rick Howard, if you are using electronics for deployment and are using a single use motor, DMS for instance, do you need to seal the BP well with epoxy or is it okay to just stuff the red cap in the cavity? Um, Rick, okay, so Rick, basically what you have here is a situation just like we've shown here on the screen. It's dual deployment. Uh, the normal way is uh, we would actually switch the location of the streamer in the parachute and put the streamer in the bottom. And there's a reason for this, and this is where your question comes in, because you can use the ejection charge of the rocket motor as a backup in case your electronics fails. And you're thinking, well, my electronics is not going to fail. Well, let me tell you about a launch. <laughs> This past weekend, uh, we, we launched a rocket with electronics, dual deployment, and we had the altimeter set for, you know, deploy the small parachute at Apogee and the main parachute at 600 feet, just like we have set up here. Well, something happened with the electronics during the flight. Um, we think it was with, um, I don't want to get into it, but something, the electronics didn't work correctly. And so what would have happened in that case if the electronics don't fire off? Um, so let's go here to flight events and change it to say, um, just like we have, streamer at Apogee. Uh, let's change that to streamer at uh, max ejection delay and deploy the main parachute at Apogee. So now if you cap your motor, like you, you're saying here, Rick, or, or pour epoxy into it, it's going to be just like a plugged motor. So we've got a plugged motor right here, and we've got our, our electronics to, uh, to work, but now our electronics are not going to work. So, we're gonna, so now we have to simulate it with no events happening. And now when we go to the flight profile, what do you think is going to happen? The rocket's going to go up, and we expect it to crash. If your electronics don't fire and you don't have a backup plan, your rocket is going to crash. When we launched on Saturday, we used the rocket motor's ejection charge as a backup to the uh, streamer. And so the streamer did come out. So what's better? A rocket coming down ballistically like you're seeing right here, or a rocket coming down fast on a streamer. A streamer's coming down slower than a ballistic recovery. And so, yes, you, I would not recommend that you do anything to the motor. Use the motor as the backup ejection charge for the altitude. You know, so, but choose a long delay. So, let me cancel out of this. So, if I was to fly this, I would go here to my motor here, my G53, and choose the longest delay possible. And then under flight events, we're going to change it back to maximum ejection. Um, so this, the altitude here was 600 feet. And then the streamer is at apogee. And we do the flight profile. So nothing's really going to change, but at 10 seconds into the flight, so when it gets to around 11 seconds, if the streamer is not out already, um, then it would the ejection charge of the motor would kick it out. So it's always choose a longer delay time than you you set than you think it's going to take to get to apogee. Um, 10 seconds is a little low here. Um, I would say in oops, cancel. In Roxim to set this up in Roxim, um, you can type in a number. So I would type in like 16 seconds, assuming that's available. And then you do your flight profile. Again, nothing's going to change here. But at 16 seconds, when we get into 16 seconds, if that streamer is not already out, okay, so at 15 seconds, it's out. At 16 seconds, the ejection charge fires. And where's that ejection charge going to go? 
it's just going to vent into the atmosphere. It's just going to go. <laughs> You'll hear it when you launch it, but it doesn't do anything. It's just firing out in the air. So that's the safe way to do it, and that's what I would recommend. Next question. Um, is there a way of opening two rock sims? I would like to compare two different rock, rocket setups. Um, two instances of rock sim. The answer would be maybe. <laughs> um, when you download Roxim, um, I know you can do it on a Mac. So let me go, go here to my applications folder. So on my Mac, I have a lot of versions of Roxim. You can see I have uh, Roxim 10.1, which is the current one. Uh, no, that's 10.1. I have a 10.2 and a 10.3. Uh, you could probably duplicate this. I hate doing this, but I'm going to duplicate it. Okay, it made a copy of it. And if I open this, let's see what happens when I open this. It's, it's launching it. It did work. So yes to that question if you're on, on a Macintosh. I'm not sure what happens on Windows. Uh, so here's my copy. I'm going to delete that. I don't need it. Empty the trash. Um, Rick Howard is, my problem with motor ejection delay in my simulation is that the recommended delay is 15 plus and the longest DMS delay is 14 seconds. Uh, well, I would, I would still, Rick, I would still use the ejection as a backup. So, so now your rocket, what, so basically what he's saying is, is maybe my rocket's going to deploy early. So let's set up the simulation here um, the optimal delay for this configuration I'm looking here is 8.11 seconds and so let's change our delay here to something smaller than that let's make it 7 which is the longest below 8 seconds so now we expect the deployment to happen when it's going upwards so launch this. Okay, so as it's taking off, we expect the streamer to deploy as the rocket's going up, and so the streamer will be dragging behind the rocket. It should have, it should have ejected. Did I not set it up right? Flight events. Oh, see, I had a deploy at max ejection delay. That's what I didn't forget. I forgot to do. Do it again. <laughs> uh, launch it again. Uh, we're getting close to time here. Okay. See, see what happened there. The streamer popped out early, and the rocket was going upwards, dragging the streamer behind it as it was coasting upwards. So now the question is, can your streamer deploy early and not shred the streamer? So what we do is we come over here and we're looking for um, the column that says velocity at deployment. So our rocket deployed the streamer at 34 miles per hour. Um, I would say that's okay. Normally, for deploying streamers, I want to be under 50, and I'm well under 50 here. So I think the streamer is going to survive. The rocket's just going to coast upwards, dragging that streamer with it just a little ways. Um, you still want to choose the longest delay you have, but uh, to me that's still safer than relying 100% on electronics, which I know can fail. Um, so one or the other could fail, and I would rather have a redundancy there. So that is the question.
answered. Uh, Ron from Georgia asked if Roxim accounts for smoke and ejection charge in, in its weight as it burns. And the answer to that, Ron, is, okay, so the motor has propellant in it. So if you go here, let me see if it, it shows it. If I go to choose engine, burn time, uh, it doesn't show the, the uh, weight. Uh, but the, the engine file, click cancel. There's another program that comes bundled with Roxim, and it's called Engine Edit. Um, 3.1, this one. So if I go into here, no, that's not it. That's Roxim Pro. Doesn't matter which one I go. There's a program called Engine Edit. So I'm going to open Engine Edit, and I'm going to open up a existing design. Say open. We're looking for an engine file. I am looking for the what it, by default it should look into your data folder where the engines are stored. So like here's the Estes engines and RSE stands for Roxim engine file. And click open there. Okay, so here is the propellant mass. So the question that uh, Ron asked was, does Roxim account for the mass of the propellant? which is this mass right here, and the ejection charge, or the ejection delay. And the answer on the delay is yes. <laughs> because when, when, these, when these files are made, and the data comes from the National Association of Rocketry, or Tripoli, and when they fire off a motor to create these thrust curves and these, these weights, they weigh the rocket initially. They weigh the motor. So they, they, they take the motor and they weigh it. And then they fire it. And they weigh it again. And then they get two weights. And when they subtract them out, that is the propellant mass weight, is the difference between them. And that propellant mass weight does include the, the delay grain weight as well, even though it doesn't really add to the thrust. It does add to the weight of the motor. Um, so yes, and when Roxim does run a simulation, it subtracts out that weight. Um, so you can see that if you go here to the graphs again, and if I uh, plot out mass, so plot graph, and look, now, now I'm getting all the data again. Now I didn't want the data, and I'm getting it. Um, let's change this to six seconds, plot the graph. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm only plotting the data to six seconds because I wanted to blow up this area right here. So the mass is the black, and you can see the mass is dropping. Why is the mass dropping? And then it stops here at burnout. So that is the mass burning off of the the rocket motor and you can see the thrust it's making the thrust right here until burnout and at that point everything is flat so that takes care of the mass uh, so Ron that answers your question <laughs> uh, oh we got somebody from the Netherlands here um, I am Dutch but I'm I'm an American <laughs> I'm a third generation American um, we are going to give away a poster. Let me uh, show you about the poster goes. Uh, this is the poster we're giving away. It's a cutaway view of the rocket. And I've signed the bottom right here at the bottom just to make sure that it doesn't increase in any value. <laughs> I always say that every week. Um, this is uh, a rocket called the Vapor. It's a see-through see clear rocket, and we sell this rocket. And when you buy this rocket, you get the poster with it. Uh, we designed this one for an educational use because um, teachers always want to show what's inside the rocket. And this has a cutaway showing what's ever inside. So this is a really good instructional poster. And I have to pick a person, and you have to be live to get this. So if you're watching this on replay, um, you don't stand a chance to get the poster. You got to show up live. There's an advantage to coming live. 
And I'm gonna pick uh, my favorite question from today, which was, uh, I think it was Karen Ma. Yes, Karen Ma, who asked about um, tumbling booster stages. Uh, I just got off on that question. That was just a fun one to experiment with. Um, so Karen Ma, you win the poster. We need to make sure that uh, we have your address. Um, that's the, the only issue is where are we gonna send it to? So we've gone an hour and four minutes. We're, we're a little long. We always go a little long every week. It always happens. So thank you for coming. Um, we do these every Friday um, at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, which is 12 noon on the East Coast. Uh, we are now, I liked, I did like using YouTube instead of Facebook. We'll announce it on Facebook, but we're gonna do it, come back here to YouTube. We've got 28 current people online right now. So all 28 of you, thanks for coming. Um, if you haven't said hello yet, please say hello so that uh, your rocketry friends can get to know you. And I'm gonna go through the comments again to make sure that I've got all the questions. And if I didn't answer your question, I'll try to answer it next week. I think there was one there from Christopher Textler. Christopher works for us. So, um, but I did see he, he wrote something. I have a question. How would I use print function to print a rocket to PDF? And how do I read that PDF? I'll answer that one the next time. That's a good question. Um, okay, so I gotta end this and we're gonna end it in uh, five seconds. So in five, four, three, two, one, go out and launch something. <laughs>